Paul wrote these words to the young church at Corinth, a church full of potential and gifts, a church that could change the world. Not very different from how I see you, full of gifts and talents, being positioned to change your world and then the world. You know you got to start with yours first, right? Don't be so busy trying to fix others if yours is still bleeding. Somebody say amen. amen. He said this to them. He says, listen, he says, there are a diversity of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But here's the admonishment, but the manifestation of the Spirit. Tell somebody, say, when that thing shows up. Thing shows up. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for what? The profit of may be seated. Today's title of the sermon is this, Source and Resource. Say that with me, Source, source. and Resource. I was so blessed when I saw the word source in the song today, Kiana. Source and resource. We'll make it make sense in just a minute. There's so many, there's so many benefits to being a Christian. Would you agree? There's so many benefits to being saved now. Would you agree? One of the greatest of those benefits is that Jesus now introduces you to the Trinity, that Jesus introduces you to the Godhead. We get to become acquainted with God the Father, God the Son, which is Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. What I need you to understand as we go back a little bit and review some stuff, I need you to understand that they're all considered God. When we introduce to them in Genesis, it said, in the beginning, God, the word God that was used in that text, there's so many definitions of God throughout the Bible, but that particular, that particular word meant Elohim, which God in the plural, it was speaking that all three were present. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were present. And here's the thing you need to know about them. They have equal power. But when it comes to me and you, they take on different roles. That's the only way we're able to distinguish them. They can, they can all do the same thing. But because you matter so much, they took on different roles. See, what's so awesome about that? Out of the gate, God is already teaching. He's saying, although we have the same abilities, we know our role. Hmm. Doesn't mean that I'm more talented than you. It's just that I got a role. And when people play their role, great things can happen. Am I making sense to you? You don't see the Trinity in a fight disputing over who gets to do what. They understand they all have equal importance because if one of them missed their spot, we die. And so many things that God wanted to do through the church, they died. Why? Because somebody went in their role. You were trying to do somebody else's because you thought your role wasn't significant enough. But when everybody's in their right place, great things happen. So Christ introduces me to the Godhead, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because I need them all. 
For me to become who God needs me to be, I need every last one of them playing their role. I need God the Son. I need Jesus Christ. You know why? Because I needed his sacrifice. I needed his sacrifice and I need his intercession. Because he was willing to die for you and me, that means we were, we were what? Forgiven. Anybody needed to be forgiven? And the Bible also says now that, now that he's ascended up into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, it says he lives to do what? He lives to, he's excited over his role to make intercession, which means he is constantly leaning into the Father, petitioning him, give wonder what he needs. He loves that. He lives for that. That's his job. And so not only did he save me, but he's also interceding me, seating for me. And without him, I wouldn't have had the wonderful introduction to the spirit. God, the spirit now lives inside of me. Watch this. He knows his role. It wasn't the Holy Spirit's job to save me from hell. That was Jesus' role. It's the Holy Spirit's job to save me from me. See, it's not a lesser role. Because even after being saved, we can still be real foolish. Did anybody really leave the altar brand new? That's good church marketing. Come to God, you become brand new. They didn't tell you that become means... Days and months and years. And so I need the Holy Spirit in my life to deal with me because it's his job to save me from myself. It is through him that I'm able to work through some things because scripture says it's his job to lead me into what? The truth. In order for me to understand the truth, I must first have the lie exposed. Truth doesn't even get consideration until the lie is exposed. And so his role in my life is one of confrontation. We want to water him down and make him just the thing that tingles your spine. We want to water him down and make him look like he's just the thing to make your feet move. He's the one that confronts. Jesus said this about him. He said, listen, he said, I'm going to send you some help. Which means you need it. You ain't going to say what you don't need. I'm sending you some help, so therefore you must need it. And he said, oh, by the way, he's not going to speak of himself. He's just going to tell you what I've already said, so don't think you're going to get a new leader. He's just going to show up and be a little more confrontational. See, when Christ was here, I had to be in the vicinity of Christ to hear him because he was stuck in the body. He said, but I'm going to send the other God who can be in all of you at the same time. So listen, give your neighbor a break because they've been confronted just like you. Am I making sense? But I need that. I need to be confronted so I can stop acting like I'm whole. So I can stop acting like I'm so spiritual that y'all need me. So I can stop acting like I have special gifts to look at you and read you and God trusts me to tell you about you because somehow the veil got put back up and God needs me to talk to you. But all I'm really doing is trying to heal my own stuff because I need to feel significant so I'm going to use God to position me like I got special powers. I know. I don't expect love offers off stuff like that. Because I'm messing up with somebody's agenda. Because we have a plan to become significant. But it's our plan. It ain't his. And so if Jesus Roy is interceding to the Father on my behalf, it means God the Father's job is to be the general overseer. To determine when I get what I need to get to do his will. I need them all. And so all of them are working together 
in great harmony. I'm so, I'm so glad they don't fuss with each other. They're working in great harmony to serve as my source. Somebody say source. They are working together to be my source. What is a source? Source means this. Source means they are my original supplier. My original supplier. They are the beginning of everything for me. So God is the source of my blessings. What are blessings? Instructions. Ain't cars and lands and houses. You get instructions to get those. He is my source, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, working so well together that it seems like just one is dealing with me. But all three have particular roles that they're dealing with me on all at the same time as my source. And so why does he show up? Why is he willing to be my source? He's willing to be my source because he's trying to convert me into a resource. Source, producing resources. God is the original supplier, but if he's making me the resource, that must mean he has an expectation. Somebody just said it up here a few minutes ago. Has an expectation that as he gives unto me, I turn around and act like the secondary supplier. And I give unto others. Understand that. God is my what? Trying to make me a what? The prefix re means again. He says, I'm going to give it to you. I need you to give it again. I'm going to give it to you. But I need you to give it. I'm like, Todd, y'all going to talk to me or we're going to stay here. I'm going to give it to you. But I need you to do what? Give it. It don't make sense to hoard it, does it? It doesn't make sense to hold on to it. Because as Elder Dillon like to say, I'm a conduit of God, meaning I'm the thing through which God has to. So God, why did you save me? Why do you pursue me? Why do you put up with me? Why do you deal with me? Why do you forgive me over and over again? Why are you a God of long suffering? Because I need a resource I'm a resource I'm called to supply it again what is it whatever's needed to heal whatever is needed whatever my neighbor needs to be delivered I'm called to do it do me a quick favor to wake up your neighbor look at him and say are you my resource? Then look back at them. Wait, wait. And, and if they look like they had an attitude, slide over. <laughs> if they look like they too good to talk to you, then they too good to give. Ain't nobody that cute in Jesus. Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody that cute in Jesus. But God believes, God believes in giving another chance. So look back at him again and say, I know you didn't understand the seriousness of this matter. So I'm going to ask you one more again. Are you my resource? Now look back at him and say, what are you supposed to be giving me? Mm-hmm. What are you supposed to be giving me? What are you making me go without? What are you holding on to that's making me vulnerable? Hear that again. What are you holding on to that's making me vulnerable? Because God gave it to you. So you can turn around and give it to me. You're supposed to be my resource. All that he's done 
is not just to fill you. All that he's done is so you can fill me too. I need you to grow. I need you to quit playing and deal with you. I need you to quit faking me out, acting like you good when you ain't good. Go get good. Let, let me know. It's okay. I'm patient. I'm waiting on you because I understand I'm in process too, so I ain't got no way to judge you. But don't, don't, don't act like you finished. Because if you act like you finished, I'm going to stand there with my hands out. But God didn't do all of that for you to be cute in him. God didn't do all of that so you just have a testimony about how far you've come from. Because if you can talk about how far you've come from and you can't point to folk who come far because of you. And it's getting old. It's, it's, it's the story's getting old about your church hurt. We don't heard that enough. Ain't that much hurt in the world. Because if we make a couple phone calls, we find out you really want church hurt. You was church meddling. And somebody got you together. Because you didn't know your role. And now you're claiming hurt. It's enough to hear. I'm tired of hearing about how scared you are. It's enough of that. I'm tired of hearing you <laughs> proclaim how deep you are. And I, can, I can't even smell fruit, let alone see it. resource what are you supposed to be giving me besides attitude see you got to understand this if you can accept today after you get over your offense because the more offended you are the more in violation of what I just said you are and I've done this long enough that your mood swings don't bother me they don't. Dude, they don't. They don't. They actually motivate me. You look pissed, I preach harder. <laughs> Come stand up on your pew. Because <laughs> truth be told, you mad at me, you already acting up behind my back anyway. <laughs> if you don't like me, you're already trying to build a coalition against me anyway. But your version has already come and gone several times before. <laughs> I see your spirit. I recognize your spirit. I ain't moved by your spirit because I'm contained by the spirit. And he ain't lost the fight. I've learned something about him. You're going to get with it or get gone. Oh, you've been so arrogant. No. That's not arrogance. Those are war stories. It's not arrogance. Just war stories. Been here before. Seen you before in another package. Be healed or be left behind. Because God is trying to make you a resource. Let him do it. Because what's amazing about being a resource, hear me, when you, are, when, you, when you embrace the fact that he's my source, he's dealing with me to make me a resource, he's positioning me so I can be a giver to others. He's making me a resource because guess what? Becoming that, it begins to tear down every principality. It begins to tear down every hang up, everything that was given to you as Satan's plan to make you live beneath the glory. God intended for you. I'll say that again. When I accept that I am a resource and that everything I'm going through is to refine me into that, it's so that God can begin to tear down everything I used to believe about me that got to me earlier because it was part of the enemy's plan. To keep me living beneath the glory of God. How does it do that? It, see, see, listen. Help me teach this Holy Spirit. See, as I'm becoming a resource, 
that term by itself means that I am automatically becoming valuable. Hear that. The last thing Satan wants you to figure out, Tina, is that you're valuable. See, listen. All of society's ills, every social issue, every relational issue is born out of us trying to become valuable the wrong way. God has a plan to give you value, but everything that we do wrong to each other is us trying to circumvent a process ordained by God so that we might create value ourselves. When we want to tear down others, we're doing that because we're trying to be valuable. If I don't believe I can go up, if I let you go down, I'm still up. The things that we do to hurt other people's momentum. Show up to cause division and visions that are already existing. Causing discord is because I want to show up and be valuable, but at your expense. And so there is an innate part of us, a built-in part of us, that longs to matter, and it is a God thing, but whenever there's something in you that's a God thing that's not explained to you by God, it can be perverted. And used against you. But when I begin to allow the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, to begin to, to reveal to me how or what type of resource I am, what I'm supposed to receive and then give. It begins to serve like antibiotics that begin to contend with the disease, the disease of lies that affected me. Mm. And just like with any other antibiotic, it ain't instant. You got to give it time to do its work. And the doctors, when they give you antibiotics, what they say? Don't stop taking it just because you feel good. Because it's trying to let you know that the disease is sneaky. The disease just act like demons. Because the Bible says it's about demons. That when demons evacuate a place, they linger nearby. Waiting for opportune times. In other words, they scoping you out, allowing you to feel free. But he looks to see, he said, if the house remains empty, meaning that if you don't put nothing in its place, the demon says, well, since it's vacant, come on. Because the last time I was here, I got put out by myself. I need some help. Scripture says, and he, he brings seven more. And it says the latter state of the man is worse than the former. And so if you don't allow God to do the work, the disease comes back with abandonment. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about this Holy Spirit. Wow. The latter state is worse because if you don't kill the disease, the disease normally mutates. Then, Miss Betty, the disease will adjust itself so that it becomes something else. If you don't get rid of it, it becomes something else to get you. So it can't be played with, it has to be destroyed. The same thing is what God is dealing with us. He said, if you don't let me kill it, you don't club no more. But Lord, you raise hell as a Christian. It mutated. Am I making sense? Mm. 
And so this knowledge of being a resource It begins to contend with my infections. It begins to contend with what the lies have fed me all of my life. Lies like I don't matter. Because whenever I believe I don't matter, I'm open to compromise. When I believe I don't matter, I have no standards nor boundaries. And whatever come can come. Whatever I need to become, I'll become. I'm I morph into whatever my moment need, whatever the people need. I become a variety of things and continue to lose myself because I don't think I matter. I won't defend what doesn't matter. So I got to get past that. The lies will tell me, convince me that I'm not worthy of love. So I'll accept the knockoff just to convince myself I got companionship. <laughs> would say so that I don't feel alone but truth be a lot of us are with people and still because I believe the lies I believe the lies that I can't outlive my mistakes which means I'm constantly stuck in a small world based off of behavior when I was uninformed people say when you know better you do better but sometimes you know better and the lie won't let you do better. Ain't nothing more frustrating than knowing the potential of a thing but feel like you can't participate in it. So we need to quit coming up with these cliches and I think about how they affect folk. You know better, you do better, but you won't understand what's restraining you. Because I know better, but I still hear it. I got wheat and tear growing up in the same place. But when I become a resource, (laughs) it means that I'm not only needed by the people I'm called to. I'm needed by God. Oh, y'all missed that. I'm not just needed by the people I'm sent to. I'm actually needed by God. My obedience to God's will for me makes me need it. The moment I step out of his will, he can easily find a replacement. But whoever becomes my replacement, they now become needed. But as long as I'm in his will, he expects me to be in position. So therefore, I am needed. And wherever there's need, there's value. Am I making sense to you? And that changes my whole perspective of my life. God needs me. Hmm. That right there ought to make somebody just want to get it together. Let's look at the text real quick. Put 4 and 7 back up there, 1 Corinthians 12. I like Paul. Because Paul is us. I like him a lot. See, Paul, and I like him because he he reminds me a lot of us, you. I know the church, our pastor. And see, what Paul is, Paul is used magnificently, but you got to understand Paul came from an old life. And he came from an old life where he gave it his all. Our pastor folk, I know you saved and Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized, aiming to make heaven your home and Jesus on your side and all that. But you had some proclivities. Mm. Sit there and look deep. Because truth be told, we just got to find a couple folk who, who knew you. I know you sister so-and-so and brother, what's them call it now? <laughs> but you don't take us around your folk because they remember. <laughs> you had some proclivities. And whatever, whatever you did, like Paul, you tried to do it to your fullest.
Ain't got but three honest people up in here. Mm -hmm. If you are a player, you are a player player. Oh, and, and, and player comes in all genders. It ain't just a man thing. Yeah. Y'all know how to get rent paid. If you were a cusser, you were a cusser's cusser. You could have taught classes. Because ain't no need of learning the language unless you're proficient with it. You could have done Rosetta Stone a long time ago. If you need to learn how to maneuver through the hood, buy the CD. It will explain how to stop them from rolling up on you at the bus stop. Cussers, cussers. If you were sneaky, you weren't just sneaky. You were sneaky, sneaky. Look at y'all. Old man is passing the Murray, but you ain't got amnesia. <laughs> Some of y'all sitting in there going, <laughs> Woo, yes I was. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Folks like to say that miserable day of sin. But sometimes you got to say, well, yeah. I had a ball. <laughs> Dylan consequences came. Hmm. But then one fortunate day, God got you. Truth showed up and held a mirror up in your face. It did not only not only showed you where you were presently, it showed you where you were headed. And so you begin to receive God. And so listen, by the time we got to meet you, our experience with you here, your experience with me, our experience with each other now is where you're still trying to come out of it. You're not a manipulator's manipulator, but you're still a little manipulator. You love Jesus now, but you still got some ways where you try to circumvent process and you self-promote. Because I'm still trying to conjure up value. And I'm still trying to learn the God's way of doing it. And so oftentimes, listen, watch, thank you, Lord. Like oftentimes when we have an offense at church or mad at church and leaderships, it's because they won't sign off on your method of obtaining value. There's a way to do it. And so sometimes when we don't want to go with the process, we just hold court with whomever will listen. Let me tell you what I can do. Let me, let me speak into you. Because maybe if I do, if I show my gift to a couple of y'all, it'll get back to pastor and he will recognize my gift. Mm. I need a snicker. Because my filters ain't working well right now. <laughs> and so we're having to learn to adjust as we all are coming out from under our proclivities. Through salvation, through Christ, God the Son, we escape hell. Now I'm trying to escape me. And see, Paul understood that. And then see, if you, if, you, if you read this stuff, if you understand this about Paul, you'll read this stuff so differently now. Paul understood trying to escape an old life 
Paul understood trying to escape an old name. And so whenever he's writing to the many churches that God blessed in the form, he talks from that place. He talks from the place of, I know what it's like to embrace this new way while you're trying to outlive what you used to do. I know what it's like to try to sound different, talk different, act different, but folk having lost memory of what you used to be. He said, I understand all of that. It was Paul, the one that talked about working out your soul salvation. Because he understood that although I disappeared for three years and God worked on me, I still had some stuff in me. Like I told you the other week, he still showed back up on the scene and one of his issues God made him deal with immediately because when he showed up to talk to the disciples, because, you know, he done, he, he, he done came out, he done been with Jesus for three years, he knew they were going to have a welcoming party for him. But they didn't know Paul, they remembered Saul. And so they rejected him. Why? Because God says, I need to fix that. If you got an issue with rejection... You want God to make you acceptable. But when you have an issue with rejection, God allows people to reject you. Until you stop whining about it. <laughs> Lord, make them love me. Make them love me. God said, that is, that, that is, that is such an idol to you. Because if folk don't just automatically like you, you ain't going to do nothing. So let me build that muscle. And so Paul understands what it's like trying to overcome people's memory of you. Because if you ask him about himself, he wasn't just a Pharisee. He said, I'm a Pharisee's Pharisee. It's in the book. And so he writes to his people from this perspective. And he's trying to tell them, this is how I began to get my value back. I had to realize God's my source. I'm just a resource. He says, because being, being in relationship with God, this is what begins to happen. He says, there are a diversity of gifts. Resource. All around you, people have different giftings. News flash, competing with each other is worthless. Because you'll make somebody shy away from the gift you might need next year. They're different, a diversity, difference of gift, but what? The same source. He said there are differences of ministries, meaning different methods. But that's not how we do it. But where I come from, we did it like. But where you come from didn't have these people. And so you have to adjust the method to get to the result. He said there are different methods, but listen, the one thing that's still the same is what? Same source. Different activities, different operations in God, but it's still the same Source, I need you to understand how this works. I need you to be the resource. I'm the source. I need you to be the one that's willing to give it to them again. And when I give again, here's the wonderful thing about being the resource. Is that as the resource, who has to get filled first? Please understand this. God will use you in your brokenness, but that's not his whole game plan for you. His game plan is to get you to a place where you're filled. Here I am, God, a vessel. Pour out your blessings. God's dealing with me. And, you know, Malachi said, oh, tell you to give your tithes. And he said, see when he opened up a window of heaven and do what? You got to understand, he didn't say throw. Whenever you pour, it's intentional. Then scatter, pour. There's a target. And it keeps, the problem is, we get out from under the flow. I'm half full. I want to go start a church. Not recognizing my gifts. You can be used now, but you can't get out from under the flow. 
And see, God says, when I do a work, well, let me show you what he said, because Paul wrote the same thing. Paul wrote in Philippians 1 and 6. Put that up there. Here's what he said. This is what I've learned, church at Philippi. Being confident this very thing that he who has begun a good work will do what? Will work in you till his what? Come. Plead. Because he wants you whole. Because at this point, I can, I still, I'm still not a good resource. What's he, what he wants to do is put you in a place. What you say, Minister D? Bloom where you're planted. Because he'll find a place for you. And keep pouring. And then eventually, my cup runneth over because I remain under the flow. But those that are connected to me, everybody attached to me wins. No, they don't. If you ain't in position. Wonderful song, prophetic. It's true if I realize who's the source. And I stay up under the flow. Now, while the flow is going, all kind of hell is raging on the, on, all around me. But I stay up under the flow. Because I now realize that somebody is waiting to get my overflow. See, that's a, right there is a picture of healing and service. I'm just waiting. I, I, I'll serve God when I get it together. You'll get it together when you serve God. Because he's, he's, he's committed to pouring more to me. Because I'm connected. If you haven't accepted the fact that you're more than just a musician, that you're more than security, that you're more than an usher, that you're more than a singer, I am a resource. So I've got to get good at this. I've got to get healed at this so that this thing can overflow. And when it overflows, it doesn't contaminate Now I understand why God says this. Paul wrote this too. Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do. We shout over that. Exceeding the abundant. Exceeding, going past abundant. Why would he go past abundant for you if you're going to keep it? He exceeds what I need, so I have some to give. God is not committed to you being a glass half full so you can serve. God does a complete work in you, so you can now give too. But it only happens when I accept that I am a resource. And because I know I'm a resource, I put up with so much. I can't quit. Because somebody's still waiting for my overflow. I can handle you not liking me. Because he's waiting for my overflow. I can handle what's being said about me over here. Because somebody right here is still receiving. I can't run and defend myself over there because I'm out of the flow. As a matter of fact, God tells me it ain't your role to defend. I got you. Had to learn that. Too often times we put down the plow to go campaign. God said, who responsible for your name? But Lord, don't you hear what they're saying about me? That's fine. What you going to do about it? I'm going to turn up the volume because I'm tired of you worried about what people say. I'm going to let them talk about you until they don't bother you. But Lord, like Paul said, listen, there's a messenger that buffers me. If you could just take it away from me, God, I could serve you better. God said, turn it up. Because if you're so concerned about what they're saying, you're not concerned about what I'm saying. So I'm going to let you choose what you're going to say. Lord, if you could just pull me out of the fire, no, I'm going to be with you. 
Lord, if you can make sure I don't go into the lion's den, no, we're going in there, but I'm going to be in there with you. David says, if you could just hide me in your secret place, verse 14, God says, I'll be with you in trouble. I ain't going to no secret place with you, Wendell. See, don't nobody want to read all of that. We said, God, if you can just hide me under your shadow of your almighty, go to your secret. God said, I ain't meeting you in the closet. Quit praying. Uh oh. You heard what I said. Go do it. Lord, I'm scared to be out there. I'm out there. I'm scared to be up front. I'm up front. I'm scared to use my voice. I won't show up till your mouth opens. You keep telling me you're scared. I keep calling you a resource. But God, I got all of this in me. Why? Because I'm going to tell you why you got it in me. You won't let me flush it out. You won't let me flush it out. There is no place you can go that's safe where you can get your stuff out. God makes you get your stuff out publicly. I know you wish it was different. I know you wish he'd get you a nice little safe place to stick you, refine you, polish you up, get your language right. No, take all your cussing out, take all your manipulation out, but he props you up and still every now and then you want to go, God. Mm. And you going, God, they, they don't want to hear me now because they saw me messed up. He said, no, the messed up folk was waiting to see somebody messed up being used. But what about the deep and spooky folk who are looking at me crazy now? Know your role, Wendell. Get up under the flow. Let me flush it out. So you can be it. But God, you know I'm still struggling. That's why I called you. That's why I called you. But God, don't you want to present a perfect vessel? No, I want to present a vessel being perfected. Because everybody that's, I'm going to draw by your light. Going to show up a mess. They going to show up a mess. If I put you out there perfect, you'll only be able to relate to perfect folk. I need you to know I have need of you. The Bible says when Jesus was going back into Jerusalem, <laughs> okay, Holy Spirit. I say ain't in my notes, but I hear you. He said when Jesus was getting ready to go back into Jerusalem to die, he said he sent the disciples in first. I need you to go. He sent the church in first. And he said, you're going you're gonna to find a little jackass tied up. <laughs> I need you to go to who, who, whoever has the jackass tied up. And tell him God has need for that jackass. <laughs> Surely the king of kings will ride in on a stallion. Surely the king of kings would ride in on a thoroughbred. At least, you know he at least needs a Clydesdale to support all that glory. He says no. Bring me that jackass with his little stubborn self. He's tied up because he don't know how to act. Bring him here. I'm going to ride in on him. I'm going to ride in on the ones who folks think can't hold up my weight. I'm going to ride... I'm going to ride in on the ones that folks have disqualified and counted out. I'm going to ride in on the ones that don't look mature enough to carry the glory. Bring me the jackass. And when I heard him say that, I said, Lord, I've been one. I've been a, <laughs> I've been one. And my decisions 
made me bound from time to time. My decisions gave me small spaces to occupy. But I was born to carry weight. And if, if you just sin for me, if, 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 if you, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care what they say, if you say, I have need. Because resource means I am needed. In this condition I'm in right now, God, just come here. God, don't you see how bound I am right now? Nobody's paying me attention. I'm just, I'm just an old soul right now. No, no, you, 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 come here, come here. Because of what you've been through, you can handle this right here. Come here, come here, come here. Because of what you've been through, when I call you, you'll praise me like you really mean it. Come here, come here, come here. Because of what I've kept you in. Cute people can't dance, but you can't. Come here, come here. You gonna be excited when I call you. You gonna know it's a blessing when I call you. You gonna know. Come here. But God, let me free my No, no, come right here. Because I, I want them to see you coming just as you are. Come here. You're my resource. Mm. Bring that jackass here. Just sit right here, Jesus. Sit right here. While I take you in to die for me. Mm. I'm a resource. <laughs> Messed up as I am, D. I'm a resource. And I'm going to stay up under the flow until he flushes it all out. Because he promised me. He said, when I behold him, I shall be just like him. So, and so if he ain't come back yet, he must still be working on me. I could go on forever. Come on, let's stand. Look back at somebody again and say, are you my resource? And you look back at him and say, no, you can't say that. We're at church. <laughs> say, dang on Skippy. Dang on Skippy. <laughs> I am. I don't know everything I got in me. But I know I got something. Ain't no way in the world I'd still be alive with all the foolishness I've committed. God has to be preserving me for something. God has to be keeping me for something. And it must be so valuable that he keeps making death stay away. He must be keeping my mind for something. He must be making me more than a conqueror for something. In this earthen vessel, this hidden treasure. That's so powerful, Travis. I mean, y'all think about this. We're going to go home in a minute, but I need you to see this. There's something in me so worth saving that Jesus, perched in heaven, had to go, I got to go down there. I, I got to go. And the angels are complaining between their worship. What is man that thou art mindful of him? In other words, why does window mean so much to you? Look at him. He still ain't getting it right. Look at him. Why are you going to get up from your place of royalty? What is man? Not even who. What is it? That you are mindful of him. That you can't stop thinking about him. Morning, noon, and night. All it is. We cried, holy, holy. You go, look at Wendell. What's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing?
prepare me about it. What for? Because I've crowned him with glory. He just doesn't know it. Prepare me a body. I got to make him aware of his value. Prepare me a body. Let him see how much I'm willing to suffer for him so he can finally see how much he means. Prepare me a body. He's got to see Because when they nail me to the cross, maybe he'll see. When he sees what they do to my back, maybe he'll see. When he sees me struggling to breathe for him, maybe then he'll see how much he means to me. When he hears me use my struggling breath to say, Father, forgive him. Because he don't even know what he's doing. Then maybe he'll believe. How much he means to me and that I need him you need me God I need you this plan includes you you are the continuation of the plan of redemption you are the continuation of the plan of redemption the earth travails waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God waiting for us to show up I must be a resource I'm supposed to supply it again everything you give me that becomes my calling you give me something else my platform is expanded give me something else every time you fix something Jesus I'm gonna give it away every time you teach me something Jesus I'm gonna give it away you can trust me and the more you can trust me D the more he pours the more I give away the more he pours it is more blessed to why God because I pour more Give it away. Put the takeaway up there. Huh. Sir. Look at me for a second. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Everything you've gone through. All things have been working together. Even stuff you thought you was in charge of. Even the stuff you thought you was big and bad enough to do. Didn't surprise God one bit. Because he'd already seen the movie. It's working to form you into a re- source so you are relatable he can trust you connect and as he heals you flow over your commitment to God to be his resource not only ensures your healing but it also ensures your value in the earth and in the kingdom of heaven look at that the earth will seek you out for solutions and the heavens will seek you out for assignments. You will become needed. You ain't got to force your way. You ain't got to manipulate your way. God says this. Your sons and daughters shall come to your rising. You ain't got to self-promote. Because light is hard to hide. light is hard to hide if God hasn't given a platform he must still be pouring let him heal let him heal come on bow your heads with me 
Is there anybody in this place before we leave today who is now ready to give your life to Christ? You don't have to come up front. All you got to do is raise your hand where you are. And I'll acknowledge that and then we'll pray as a church family. Is there anybody now who's ready to give your life? Master, we now reject the labels that we brought to you that were given to us by people who weren't there at our creation. And we now receive the label of resource. You need me. I need you. You heal me to use me. Thank you. You build value in me so that I don't have to seek it the wrong way. You're healing me as I serve you and serve others. Thank you, God, that you do use me while I'm being perfected. But I'm grateful that your plan is to still perfect me. One day I'll be whole. But in the meantime, I'll serve. I'll give whatever I'm good at and receive from others whatever I'm not. I know how to be the teacher and the student all at the same time. I know how to be the leader and the follower all at the same time. God, I just want to be whole and I want to be used. Thank you for declaring to me today that I'm needed. It's already beginning to shatter some chains. I'm already starting to feel a little better about myself. That must be that healing moving through my soul. Thank you, Master, for meeting us here today. In Jesus' name, I love you. Amen. Thank you.